I'm going to try a sci-fi story today. Let's try a sci-fi story today. Let's do it. i got to warn you, though, and I'm doing this as I'm going for a walk. I'm going to be walking by the dog that always barks. So I'm, there will be a barking dog interrupting this story at some point. But thinking about the Webb telescope, taking pictures of the universe, distant galaxies, seeing all these images come through, what might we find? Isn't that the question? What might we find? What might we find? What if we found something? Scientist at NASA. His name's Tim. Tim the scientist. Which he hates it when his friends call him Tim the scientist. By the way, I. He's like, don't. My name is Tim Johnson. I have a PhD. They're like, yeah, you're Tim the scientist. And he's saying, why, why do people find that funny? I don't even, it's not even a joke. You're just doing it because it annoys me, aren't you? Just call me Tim. Don't call me Tim the Scientist. Hey, it's Tim the Scientist. There aren't even other Tim. It would even make sense if there was like a, a, another Tim who was a contractor. But in our social circle, I'm the only Tim. There's no need to just call me Tim the Scientist. But Doug, who's kind of the alpha of the group, he was really, he was the one who got behind the Tim the Scientist uh, nickname. And it just stuck. And, and now for years, he's just known as Tim the Scientist in his social circle. He finally left that circle. He is going back with less and less frequency because he just doesn't want to hear it anymore. But his colleagues at NASA, they don't do that. They treat him with respect. In front of his back, at least. Who knows what they're saying behind his back. They just call him Tim. At any rate, Tim is looking through these pictures of the Webb telescope. And he sees something that, like, at first, it just made him furious when he saw it. He just thought, oh, this is, this is a prank. Somehow they knew this is totally a prank. So he had to go back and check the data. He double-checked the data. He triple-checked the data. And he brought in a colleague, Ron. No nickname, just Ron. And he showed it to Ron. And Ron double-checked and triple-checked. At first, Ron thought it was a joke, but then he realized it was not a joke after double-checking and triple-checking the data. So at the end, they brought in three, four more scientists, double-checking, triple-checking the data. And they realized it was, in, it was incontrovertible. And Ron said, is that how you say that word, incontrovertible? And Tim said, I think it is. But we know what you mean. Undeniable. And Ron was like, I'd rather use the word incontrovertible. I don't like not using a word because I don't know how to say it. But at the same time, I don't want to risk saying the word incorrectly because then, you know, it makes me sound less credible. Tim said, we got bigger problems here with, with this in, incontrovertible. Now I'm questioning it. All right, well, do, we have proof. We have physical evidence. The images from the Webb telescope, there's no possible way this could be a facsimile. We got to take it to the chief. They take it to the head of NASA. They put it down. They put the image on the desk for the head of NASA. And the head of NASA looks at it. And he's looking at a picture of a bunch of distant, gal distant galaxies. And he can see very clearly that some of the galaxies are aligned in a way in which words are spelled. And the words that are spelled are, hey there, Tim the scientist, with an exclamation point at the end. 
And the chief says, I don't... Okay, so this is a joke. They're like, no, 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 it's not a joke. It's incontrovertible. Did we say that right? Say what right? Guys, guys, the chief is getting pissed. This is ridiculous. This is a waste of all of our time. This is a prank. Get this out of my face. And Tim said, look over at Ron's face. And the chief looked over at Ron's face. And Tim said, you know, Ron, we make that face if this was a joke. He's not good at jokes. We know that. He's not good at jokes. He's not good at deception. We try to play at a surprise party, you tell him he's going he's gonna to screw it up. He's going to let the cat out of the bag. So the chief says, okay. So what you're telling me is that these galaxies are shaped in a way that when we look at them through this web telescope, it says, hey there, Tim the scientist, with an exclamation point. And Tim says, you know, I always knew the universe didn't like me. I always, I could feel it. And the chief says, okay, we, we can't, we shouldn't draw any conclusions. And Tim is like, what other conclusion is there? Clearly, I'm being, I'm being pranked at the cosmic level. The chief says, I, you know, I'm still, are you, are we absolutely sure it's not a, and Ron is like, the math speaks for itself. The chief is walking, pacing back and forth, and he's saying, well, the only way that this could be possible, because basically the universe would have to be created in a way where it says, hey there, Tim the scientist, from the specific vantage point of our planet. I mean, this would be something that would be, what, billions, trillions, gazillions of years in the making. It, it just doesn't it, it just seems impossible well Tim said that I mean there's a lot of things that that seem impossible or that do that would have seemed impossible a hundred years ago that are now possible I guess the next logical question is should I reach out to Doug and the chief is like who's Doug and Tim's like, he's the one who called me Tim the Scientist. Like, this, this is classic Doug right here. The chief said, what do you, there's no classic Doug. What are you talking about? What, uh, who is this Doug? And Tim said, you know, typical high school jock. I think he's an, he's an investor now. I don't, I mean, he's the one who coined the phrase. You're saying that this Doug has something to do with this? Well, it seems to be an incredible coincidence. There's only one way of finding out. We have to bring in, we have to bring in Doug. So they bring in Doug. They, they, they call Doug. They don't say what's going on over the phone, but they set it up. They fly him out. He didn't, all he knows is it's NASA. It's top secret. He shows up. They show him the pictures, they explain the math. Doug looks at Tim, and he says, Tim the scientist, (laughs) Tim the scientist, it caught on, man, it caught on. And the chief said, listen, I don't like your attitude. This is one of my best scientists. I myself was bullied when I was younger, and I don't appreciate your tone. Now, I want you to tell me right now, under the threat of federal penalty, under the threat of being jailed, do you have anything to do with this? And Doug says, well, I mean, if I did have anything to do with this, I mean, wouldn't that technically make me a god? Chief says, I don't, I don't believe in it. I just don't believe in it. 
Doug says, well, I mean, is that a risk you're really willing to take? Would you dare to question the will of God if it so happened that I were God? At that point, Ron took a pencil and just jammed it in Doug's hand, and Doug screamed and started to cry a little bit. It's like, dude, what would you do that for? And Ron said, well, here's the thing. If he is God, it kind of explains everything. He's not a very good one. Clearly not om- omniscient. Om- omniscient? Omniscient? Is it omniscient? Omniscient? Yeah, it's not. Omniscient. It's omniscient. Doug said, well, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sue you. You, you, can't, you can't take me like this and stab me. It's unacceptable behavior. And Tim said, well, you started it. I mean, you're the one who called me Tim the scientist when I implicitly, or is it explicitly told you not? I, ex, I expressly told you. Why are we all having trouble talking? I specifically told you not to call me Tim the scientist, and you called me Tim the scientist as a way to bully me. And I was very offended by it. And now it appears... I think I believe Doug. I think Doug's not the one who did this. I think, I think it caught on with someone or something. The universe is mocking me. That's, that's the only conclusion it could be. Now let's not jump to any conclusions. Let's, let's not do that. Ron raised his hand. And uh, the chief was like, it's not fifth grade, just a- ask the question. And Ron said, well, do you think we should all start calling him Tim the Scientist? I mean, what if this is a decree? What if this is what we're supposed to do? The chief said, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Someone arranges stars and galaxies so that from our perspective it says, hey, there, Tim the Scientist. I mean, it could... I mean, it could, it could just be... It... Tim, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but maybe, maybe it's just a joke. Maybe they're just having fun. Nobody hates you. Nobody's trying to bully you. Maybe, maybe we're all overreacting here. I mean, it, there's a lot of th- worse things that could have been written. You know, destroy all humans or, you know, I'm coming for you or... But it's just, hey there, Tim. This, I mean, it, it could just be... It could be innocent. It could just be, hey, you know, how you doing? So, uh, just a waving. I mean, are we supposed to respond? I have no idea. We certainly can't respond the way, you know, we can't reshape galaxies on, on our side. I mean, I guess we could send a radio signal in the general direction, but it would take billions of years to get there. I'm not sure what to do. And they, you know, they kind of parted ways at that point. They all went home for the night. Doug flew back, very upset about being stabbed. Tim was at home. No, he wasn't. Tim was not very upset that Doug was stabbed. Secretly, wanted to th- respected Ron for doing that. Ron was thrilled that he got to stab someone and get away with it. Frankly, so they're all sitting at home trying to figure out what to make of this. What is? How do you? <laughs> how do you go on? Finally, Tim thought to himself, well, I guess the best thing I can do is I can prepare a statement of some kind and just, I don't know, record it and send it out there. So he worked on it all night. He thought about it, wrote one draft, then two drafts, then three drafts, then nine drafts. Finally, he, he looked up at the sky and he said, I don't know if this is a coincidence. I don't know if this is a prank. I don't know what it means. I just hope... I just hope to be treated with kindness. That's all I've ever been looking for. And I may not be treated with kindness. 
it's out of my control. So I guess the only thing I can do is treat others the way I want to be treated and hope that that somehow is what needs to be done. And thus, Tim made it a point to uh, always be conscious of how people liked to be talked to. I mean, he pretty much was before, so I mean, this wasn't really, it wasn't really a huge shift on his part. It's just, he was just very, you know, he would ask, you know, sometimes twice, how, you know, do, what do you want me to call you? I don't, want, I don't want to call you the wrong thing. If anything, it probably made him a little bit more annoying at parties. You're sure you're Steve. It's just Steve, not Steven. Because he never wanted to bully anyone. And, uh, you know, NASA debated whether or not to publish the images and decided, after a lengthy discussion, maybe not to. I don't think the world was ready for... They don't even know what it was. Coincidence. Who, who, they don't, they, the, the world was not ready for this. They're not ready. They're still not ready for this. Chief is still having nightmares about it. What it could mean and what it didn't mean. And they went on and they, they lived the rest of their lives. And there came a point... I'd like to tell you that there came a point where, where Tim was okay with being called Tim the Scientist. He could laugh at it. But he never got there. It was always irritating. Never talked to Doug again. And uh, felt better for it.